Well, happy late new year, everybody. Boy, we start out this new year and maybe you've got a resolution that involves encouraging others to get more into agriculture. And I want to introduce you to somebody that was a former student of mine and she still wants to hang out with me. And that's Shelby Roldrum. <laughs> Shelby is one of the youngest dairy farmers in the state of Georgia. And I'm going to introduce you to her husband here in just a little bit. But Shelby had an opportunity here not too long ago to begin a program. She was working with me called Moo Master. Shelby, tell us a little bit about this idea of Moo Masters and how it links teachers with little ladies like this. Yes, sir, it'd be a pleasure. Um, I'm a ag teacher and hearing from other ag teachers, especially since elementary ag is coming up, um, there was a lack of resources for our teachers, especially in the animal science segment. And because of my love for um, the dairy industry and working as the women's committee chair for the Strip County Farm Bureau. I wanted to make resources um, during my time at UGA um, dealing with dairy and so I created a series called the Moo Master Series and this allowed students to learn different segments of the dairy industry and at the end of their program they became certified Moo Masters and they were challenged to actually go out and become agriculture advocates for our industry. And what a great speaker and teacher that Shelby is too. And Shelby, so we're looking at this little, little lady right here. Folks at home, teachers in a classroom here in Georgia or even in the Southeast could learn about this lady. How long is she going to spend time in here before going elsewhere on your farm? So in this particular place, she's actually going to spend approximately 10 weeks in here. Okay. Um, during this facility, she gets two bottles a day along with grain. And then after she leaves this particular area, she'll go into the weaning pen. Which is over there. And the friends, the teachers, the students are learning about this online and they're engaging with agriculture and you and these calves that way. Now what I want to do is I want to take the folks inside of the barn and introduce your husband and learn about some of the things that he's done to bring that connection to ag and what wonderful things ag in the classroom has done for him. So let's move there next. Well, let me introduce you to Shelby's other half. This is Austin Waldrop. Hey, Austin, good Hi. to meet you. Good to meet you. Thanks for letting us come out to your farm. Austin got started in this business. Austin, I'm gonna just tell him that you're 25 years old, been farming as a business owner, as a dairy farmer for six and a half years yes. here. This all started for you as a teenager in an ag classroom. You wanna yeah. give a particular shout out to any ag teachers out there? Yes, Dr. Dr. Riley and Miss Lou Ann Jones. They were my high school ag teachers. The power of a teacher. And look at what Shelby was talking about, bringing the classroom right there to this farm with technology. So I want to learn from you some of the things that you've learned as a dairy farmer, as a businessman. I want to start with what's in this bucket down here, because a lot of folks at home, maybe you've seen a dairy before you think about what dairy cows eat. Tell me something. I'm looking at this bucket full of feed and kind of feed my ego here a little bit. So what kind of stuff are you feeding these cows out here that's maybe a little different than a typical dairy operation? Well, see, my dairy operation is the grazing operation, okay. which means my cows are housed on pasture 365 days a year, instead of being confined in a freestall barn and their feed brought to them. My cows go graze. So when my cows come into the parlor and milk, they get 10 pounds of feed each milking, so 20 pounds a day mm. of a custom blended ration. And it smells great, I gotta tell you. And I smell a little orange in here too. Yes, it does have byproducts from orange juice, and, which is uh, orange peelings into a pellet. Interesting. And there's corn in there, and there's cotton seed, you told me as well? Yep, it's a byproduct from your blue jeans and your t shirts from the cotton gin. No kidding. And I'm seeing kind of that lint in here that they're eating, and yes. that's up. Incredible stuff it, you learn. It's high in protein, which is really good for the cows to make milk. Interesting. And the orange is a high energy, so it's a high energy protein feed. This stuff you learn, I can't believe it. So also I gotta ask you something. The stuff that's around us, this used to not be in this barn. You took this farm over six and a half years ago, changed a lot of stuff. Tell us about these things. We see them on TV sometimes, but I didn't grow up on a dairy farm. I don't know, what is this thing? Yes, me and my brother and dad, we took over this farm six and a half years ago, okay. and this farm was built in 1940. Oh. It's an existing facility. Okay. And without my brother and daddy, we would not be, Walter Day would not be where it's at today. Mm. So we all, we made some management improvements to be better the farm and efficient. Good, yes, efficient good, good. That's good. and better for the cows. So, so what, what, is this? what you're looking at is called an automatic takeoff. Okay. So what it is, when the cow comes into the parlor, which we milk in a hair bone milking parlor. So the cows come in and they 
sort of go in, kick off to an angle. Okay, I can see that here yeah. in the stalls, okay. Yes. So we, after we prep them, which we prep them with an iodine solution, and we force strip them to make sure there's no mastitis and the milk is not discolored. Okay. Then we'll wipe them with a microfiber rag to wipe the iodine off. And that will stay on them for about 35 seconds. Then we'll wipe them off. Then we'll turn the milker on, which is not on because the system is not on. We'll turn, press this button to green, mm -hmm. which the vacuum will come on. And this chain will release and we'll attach the milker to the cow. And after this has a flow sensor in it, and after it senses that cow has about a pound and a half to two pounds of milk left in her udder, it will sense that she's done milking. Time to stop. It's okay. time to stop. Well, we're not over milking like they did in the old days. Because in the old days, they would just say, we need to get all the milk out of the cow, all the milk. Well, over years of research, we have learned that's not the best way to milk a cow. It's better to leave a little bit of milk than get all of it out. So after about two pounds, it will come off and suck back up. Yeah. It also tells us how much milk that cow is giving at each milking. So you can track that as well. Yeah. So if she comes in and she's off milk, that means she's not eating enough feed and grass, and she's either sick, and we can catch it quicker, versus not having it. And looking out for that animal's welfare right. is so important for folks to know about. I love it. Thanks so much. Right. And y'all, thanks so much for checking this out this month. Listen, while you're online, checking out the Farm Monitor Facebook page, go on over to discoverydairy.com. You can search Georgia and look up this farm right there. If you want to bring this farm into your classroom or show your folks in your living room, check out the Ranger Nick Facebook page while you're online. See what I've got going on. And until next time, for the Farm Monitor, as I always say, Enthusiasm is contagious, so pass it on. Y'all, thanks so much for watching. We look forward to seeing you right back here again this time next month. See ya.